Welcome back to Worthington Model Railway and today another unboxing video, uh, this time from Hattons. So let's get this open and see what's in it. It's a used hopper wagon. Um, Hatton's had some Hornby locomotives and coaches on special. Um, I missed out on a couple that I wanted. Um, they <clears throat> they'd sold out between me getting the email and going online, but I did find this one, which is, um, as you can see there, I think. Uh, 3452 um, BR Early Crest Class Q6. We'll open that up and look at it. On the coaching stock side, um, had a lot of uh, these um, Gresley suburban coaches, and so uh, I decided to, to add these to the collection. So there's a whole series of uh, Gresley suburban coaches. Um, I also have this um, BR GUV Maroon Coach, which I think is a, is a nice addition. Uh, more of the Grizzlies. There's a few of those in here. Yep, so uh, we'll look at all these. <laughs> I did mention the other day that I was looking for more sheep. Um, they've arrived. And uh, the other thing I also ordered was some more dogs. Um, interesting, Not wonderful, but uh, we might need a little bit of paint on those. We'll have to look, see. A couple of used things. Um, actually not used, sorry. Yes, they are. That one's used. Uh, London Carrier's um, truck and a bus. And base Toys West Riding bus. So we'll look at that as well. And uh, this, this is, a, said, as I said, a used mainline Hopper wagon. Wasn't quite expecting it to come in a package like this, but uh, open it up and look at it. Oh, there it is. Uh, it has a an added coal load that's going to need a little bit of attention, I think. But uh, otherwise, it looks in reasonable shape. Maybe need new wheels too. Um, Yep. Okay, so let's look at some more details. So this is the uh, sheep bridge hopper wagon. As I say, somebody's added a coal load, but uh, it's missing some parts there. So what I'll do is I'll just add a little more coal to it, and uh, shouldn't be an issue. It's obviously an older, older wagon. I also may upgrade these uh, wheels. It's a main line. It's one I don't have, so I thought when I saw it there used, I thought, eh, we'll just add that. It was uh, pretty inexpensive. So here we have the BT Models uh, bus. It is a... Uh, just looking for the info on this. Uh, so it's a Bristol uh, Ledeca LD1. Let's uh, pull it out and have a look at it. it looks to be a, a reasonably good model. These um, these base toys are they're not exceptional but uh, they do quite a nice job with them and they do look good on the layout. Um, there's no reasonable amount of detail here particularly on the front end there in the cab. 
windshield wipers in the mirrors and other components. Yeah, I'm uh, relatively pleased with that. Um, a little on the light side, but uh, as I say, they're static display and uh, they work well for that. So uh, this one was used and uh, this one is uh, an AEC Mammoth six wheel box van, uh, London Carriers Limited. I believe it was a, a limited edition. Um, just happened again to see it when I was looking through the used stuff and thought, oh, that would be a reasonable thing to add. Got a few places where I'm adding roads and extra trucks would be the right sort of era were definitely nice so uh, let's, let's have a quick look at this one um, nicely printed some amount of detail I'm not sure if I can get into that cab to to add some a driver some of these you can and some you can't this one looks like it's one where it might be difficult to do that The printing is certainly very nice, and the color and the paint um, works well. Uh, reasonable amount of detail again, but from a static display point of view on the layout, it'll be a nice addition. I thought it would be uh, good to uh, have a guard's van, brake van, whatever you want to call it, um, on the rake. Uh, so this one was on sale um, so uh, you can see this one it's the uh, Hornby R4936 uh, British Rail GUV Maroon Coach would have been seen on various different uh, trains after British Rail always came in The detail is, is reasonable on this. Uh, that's a reasonable amount of underframe detail there. Um, I do like the, the striping, the lining. Um, there's no sort of fitted detail in terms of anything here. It's all just uh, molded. Um, printing is nice in the end there. Pretty crisp. Um, roof detail standard and uh, look at the ends sort of the amount of what we expect on the ends of these um, there we go it's the end detail which is again all molded but uh, it looks pretty good let me uh, zoom in a little bit and we can look at the window details and uh, see the detail here again just molded but on those uh, boxes there is a lot of detail in the, the under frame the bogies have a nice amount of detail on them too generally pretty pleased with that so here we have the two grizzly maroon coaches um this one i already taken out of the box uh, this one is See that it's a uh, R4519B. Uh, it's the uh, Gresley Suburban First Class Coach. And uh, again, you know, these are kind of they're it's all molded. Uh, there's nothing, hardly anything separately fitted here. Again, there's some good detail on the end. Um, printing's nice. The first class and the no smoking signs along there. They get to. Oh, it's interesting. Uh, we have a piece broken right off there, so they will need to fix that. Uh, it's come off here. So, another little bit of super glue, I think, is going to be needed to solve that problem. Um, I take it that these are grizzly bogies. Um, I'm not 100% certain. A bit of detail on the 
under frame with the battery boxes and the uh, vacuum piping. So that's that one. And the second one we have here is uh, it's our 4521C uh, Gresley Suburban Lavatory Composite Coach. Uh, let's open this one and so these come uh, with a little packet of close coupling linkage here. Uh, I probably won't use these, but uh, they're good to have. Okay, let's uh, have a look at this one, which I'm expecting will have very similar detail to the other one. Um, obviously the area there in the middle where the uh, Bathroom is uh, first class on one end. Again, all molded, but but nicely painted, and the uh, first class and no smoking signs there are nicely applied. Uh, ends very similar, nice brake pipes on the ends, um, and uh, just the same sort of undercarriage detail as on the other one. As I say, you know. Um, when we look at these, I don't know that these are really, that I'd want to pay the retail price on these. I think, what are they, about 40 pounds or something? Um, I paid 20 pounds a piece for these on sale. Um, of course, they're actually probably a little bit more than that in the UK because of VAT and I, you know, I don't pay the VAT. So um, I think at the price I paid for them, they're, they're nice, they're a good value. Um, reasonable price but I, I do question um, the retail price on these. Um, so I just realized they also do have sprung buffers which is kind of nice. So uh, that's those two. Now let's uh, let's go look at the, uh, the, the other coaches. So just to look at the other two here we have our 4690A which is a non-corridor third class and uh, this one is uh, 4689A. Uh, it's a non corridor composite. So, again, um, the uh, British Railways uh, XLMS uh, coaching stock. Um, this first one is, uh, let's see the box here, it's uh, 4691B, uh, the third class brake, non corridor. And uh, you know, it's a similar kind of detail to the other ones we were looking at. Um, molded detail, nothing really fitted. Um, okay, they, this this handrail here is fitted, as are these. So there's a little bit of fitted handrails. The same on the end here. I don't know how much of that end detail. Uh, again, the sprung buffers, uh, nicely printed. Uh, do see some. No smoking signs on the end there, and the interior detail looks actually quite nice. Um, again, I think I paid about £25 for these, and I think that's a fairly reasonable price. Um, I'm, I'm not going to open the others up and look at them. I mean, they're basically, we're, we're looking at the same stuff um, within these boxes too. So uh, I don't want to bore you by opening up basically something that's pretty much identical, uh, particularly in terms of the undercarriage. Uh, the roofs might be slightly different, but uh, basically the same. Um, okay, let's uh, see what else we got. So as I said, Hattons were having a bit of a fire sale in a few locomotives and they had a, B or a couple of B12s and I was hoping to grab one of those but uh, they sold out by the time I got around to going to look after I did the email. Um, but this one uh, was available and also in the early BR Black which is the uh, livery that I really wanted. So um, it's Class Q5 Raven and uh, let's open it up and have a quick look. The end of the box, there we go, uh, R3542BR 
early class Q6 locomotive. Um, so as usual, um, I will show the box here. Let me see if I can get this light out of the way so you can read it. Um, so there we go, uh, class Q6, um, 6F, and uh, quite a bit of information there. Um, so this is actually from 2016, so it, it's getting on a little bit, at least the drawing is from 2016, I'm not sure exactly when it was released, um, but uh, nothing wrong with the locomotive. Uh, this one is uh, DCC ready, it's not DCC fitted, it's an 8-pin Dakota, I will just stick a standard 8-pin decoder in it. I'm not going to uh, put sound in it right now, but uh, we'll put that decoder in before we run it on the layout. So here we have the locomotive. Um, it's actually quite a nice locomotive, but uh, one thing I'll say, the tender is incredibly light and there's not a tremendous amount of weight in the locomotive. Um, there's some nice detail here, but it's, you know, it, it doesn't jump out at you because of the all-black livery. Um, roof opens and closes, which is nice. And these do look to be metal, although I think the whistle is plastic. Um, nicely fitted, fitted, separate fitted handrails here and on the front. Uh, sprung buffers, lamp iron fittings are nice. Um, we can see the, the wheels. Uh, nicely printed maker's plate there, if I can uh, can we get this to focus? Here we go. Nicely printed made it, make this plate. Um, you know the the uh, early crest is just as we'd expect. So there's not much else in the terms of lining. There is uh, there are some rivets and there's also separately fitted handrails on the back of the tender. Uh, the rear of the tender, not much to look at really. Um, it's the cab detail is pretty good. Uh, the, you know, I think we're starting to expect more and more cab detail now. Uh, for example, uh, none of the gauges are anything other than white blobs, but uh, everything is picked out nicely in there. Um, there is glazing on the front of the cab windows. Um, you can see the slight deflector on the chimney, maybe. Uh, let's see if I can get this to focus. On the front here so you can see what's going on in the smoke box door uh, nice printing down here too so I mean generally speaking I mean it, it it's a it's a nice loco it has a certain amount of detail oh I think these days we're starting to expect more detail although it's not that old what 2016 we said on the drawing so um, but uh, I, I'm relatively pleased with it, and for the price that I paid for it, uh, you know, I paid £82.50 for it. So I think at that price I can't really complain. I mean, I think it's uh, excellent, uh, an excellent price. I'm not quite sure what the retail on this is, but I think it's uh, probably, probably almost double that. But uh, uh, buying some of these fire sale items uh, can be a really good way to... Uh, to add to the collection. Uh, so based on the instruction sheet this should be fairly simple. There are two screws, one here, and one here. taking the screws off this should just lift right off there it goes interestingly it has a space here for the speaker it actually looks like it's a it has a space for like a standard Hornby TC TTS sound decoder speaker anyway um, I didn't buy a TTS for this one just got a regular 8 pin, so we'll take this out and uh, just try and look at this and see. This is suggesting that that is pin 1 right there. 
there is a no, number one next to it. Um, interestingly, these uh, Digitrax decoders don't have a pin one number on them, but pin one should be orange, which uh, would be that pin right there. So this should be the correct way for this to go in. Um, I suppose we'll find out when we get it on the track. Okay, so very, very simple to fit that. Uh, put this back on. Put it in. Okay, so I say this should be very simple. Appears to be something here not going according to plan. And it seems as if I may have an issue here because I don't have enough clearance. Ah, well, maybe the answer is going to put this over here. Yeah, never as simple as you think it's going to be, but I'm just going to take a piece of tape. Stick a piece of tape on here. Hopefully that will hold that where it needs to be. Right there. And uh, maybe now we can get the tender back on. Okay, so I determined the only way I'm going to get this speaker, this uh, chip in, is to take this blank speaker enclosure out uh, removing the screws this is a total pain Okay, I got the speaker enclosure out. And now we can get this tender back on. more than one way to do things. Well that was way more complicated than it should have been. So I battled the Minnesota snow to uh, go the hundred yards from the house to the shed where the trains are. So I got the chip programmed with my NEC power cab and uh, as you can see, the Q6 is on the track, all lined up, ready to go with the uh, rake of maroon coaches we just looked at. So, and by the way, uh, if I need to invoke rule one here, I will. I know it's actually uh, a 6F, so it should have a freight train, but I have a feeling you probably could have seen these in um, early British rail days, pulling a few coaches. So I don't think it's that far out from where it should be. As I say, let's run the train.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed looking at some of my new additions and also enjoyed watching that uh, Q6 running around the layout with those maroon coaches. Um, if you like the video, please do like it. I mentioned in my last video, I'm getting close to the point where YouTube will start to promote me more because uh, I'm close to the uh, thousand subscribers and the 4,000 viewing hours. So uh, please spread the word around if you like my videos and let's get some more people subscribed. Uh, let's get some more viewing hours and hopefully YouTube will start to uh, promote my videos more.